Hello all, welcome to Automation Squad. Today's session is a start to the whole series of AI Setter. The series has been divided into multiple episodes. Uh, at the end of the session, you will be able to know what is AI, ML types, machine learning types, deep learning, what are the types we have in machine learning. Also, to give you a high level understanding of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Additionally, we will mention the importance of combining uh, the RPA to, uh, to, the, to the ML. So firstly, what is AI? Uh, it is a theory and development of computer systems to be able to perform tasks that are normally require human intelligence and decision making. So AI comes into the picture where a robot or a, or a model which got stuck on taking its own decisions. So that's where we use ML. So this enables to mimic or performs uh, it performs the task like human does just like how we do. So there is some sort of intelligence and this intelligence and decision making capabilities will be an add-on that's where the AI comes into the picture right. So anything in this area that simulates a human be behavior comes into AI category and then it splits into two parts. So we have machine learning and then we have NLP which is natural language processing. So now what is machine learning? So it is something that allows machines or systems to learn from a large sample of historical data and predict the future information. Just like uh, uh, the example which I have shown, the, it have an input, it performs, uh, it, there is a function which, um, which performs some function based on the input and it gives an output. So that's, that's a simple, um, simple formula, uh, assume it as a formula. For example, if you see in this example, so the price is a uh, 1200 12000 USD 12 USD and that will be the input and then uh, 5000 is a square feet maybe that that is in size in meter square so that's a simple function this would be a simple sample function so this function is used to determine how much a house is worth of so that that's a simple um, way and uh, mathematically we can describe like uh, input and a function and an output So now there are uh, stages in ML. So uh, you know uh, I missed something. So to get the function that tells us the price, we look at different houses and measures where features they have like size, number of bedrooms, neighborhood, how many schools or hospitals around. So based on the comfort and based on the surroundings, the price might vary. So you can't just um, so uh, we can say that like um, uh, if you if the price is uh, always dependent. I mean. Uh, for example, in, set, in a particular area, you, you give an input like um, the house rents are directly, we can directly mention that like uh, in a, if it is a posh area, then the house rates will be automatically high. And if it is a, uh, if it is not uh, that urban, then the price will be low. But there are other cases when where we cannot uh, determine the house price just like what, what we discussed earlier. So there are situations like even if in an urban area, if the, if the house is in a center, there is such case like where um, we can't take a decision. So that's where uh, the ML comes comes into picture. So based on the surroundings, based on some features, uh, all these surroundings, size, and then uh, the popularity of that area will come will come under the features. So based on those features, the price will be adjusted. So that that's where um, the model gets trained and trained and trained uh, to in order to get an accurate result at the end. So that's about this function. So now stages in, stages in ML. So firstly, there is data. So the data is nothing but the model that, that should be able to make a prediction. We first need to teach it how to do that. And we start from, uh, uh, we start some training with examples, some data from which the model can learn. So the training data will be like the some data which uh, the model can train. So we create a model. Of, uh, how do we create a model? Given a set of data or observations, we try to fit a function to it. In this, uh, in this, this is a two-dimensional example. Uh, so the function is just a line. So this would be the function. Now that we have a, uh, we have the line, we are ready to make uh, predictions on our uh, new data. So that would be like this. This uh, line will be drawn based on the training data, and then the new. If we give a new, um, if we give a new area, so the, pr the price will be um, calculated based on the old, where the model got trained. And if the result is not accurate, then it will again go back, it will train itself, it makes additions 
and then in the next prediction will be even more accurate so uh, create a model um, now uh, so after creating model and then uh, get uh, the ml model got trained now we are ready to uh, uh, make the predictions for new data so and finally make predictions uh, like given a size in a uh, meter square or something the model will be able to pr make a prediction for the price of that house like um, if you give uh, a size in m square um, m meter square then it will make like uh, the price would be this much like that once um, once it got uh, given as a result it made a prediction most of the times we don't really know or how um, how or how uh, we know we are we have access to all the features that influence the uh, price of a house plus we don't have unlimited we don't have unlimited training examples therefore we wouldn't be able to know the exact form of the functions that describes the house price uh, what can we do in that situation that's where like we keep retraining our model to get the function closer to its correct i mean to make accurate results so that's that's what the feedback loop is in ua path we use action center for that now types of machine learning so machine learning is been classified uh, we, we have uh, many types of uh, machine learning supervised unsupervised um, and um, reinforcement learning and deep learning so that that we'll discuss now so firstly supervised learning algorithms uh, that uncover insights patterns and relationships uh, which forms a labeled training data set so the data is data, data will be already tagged to the correct answers so the algorithms are um, The algorithms are able to learn how the feature is related to the target and make make predictions on future data so that's what the supervised learning is so under super supervised learning we have classification and regression so classification is nothing but a, a label it labels each example by using a sort uh, like a boolean thing um, between two or more different classes for example uh, will a person default on a loan if he is already alone the answer would be like yes or no like uh, classifying males it, it is a spam or not a spam not a spam so that would be the classification and regression it results it results uh, it returns a numerical target for example the price of home just uh, how we discussed about the example earlier it would be like a numerical data that's what a regression means so that's about um, the supervised machine learning and next the unsupervised machine learning so all uh, the unsupervised uh, infer patterns from the from a data set with re without reference to labeled outcomes uh, the example would be looking at all credit card transactions identifying the credit card fraud by finding the uh, transaction outliers so it um, it would be like it depends on the patterns uh, that that which uh, data set with the, the data with uh, I mean sorry it infers it um, infers the patterns which is formed by a data set simply For example, if you see here, the buildings. So, th this would be this would be the pattern in in the under. I mean, the structure of the data. Now, the reinforcement learning algorithms learn by trying to react external inputs and are trained using a system of um, rewards and punishments, just like a trial and error. So you can think of it is as a trial and error. For example, a robot trying to learn how to shoot a basketball. So each time the ball goes into the basket, the bot realizes that it did something good and remembers it what it did. And each time it misses, it learns from that information as well. And then uh, in the, for the next time, it learns from that punishment and then it won't do that punish uh, do that uh, thing which got which it got punished. It always it try to avoid that and then make the correct uh, goal. That's a simple example of reinforcement learning. And then finally, we have uh, deep learning. So this uh, deep learning, which comes uh, or is a part of mi machine learning, so it's basically the part of AI, and it's um, it and it mi mimics as as we discussed earlier, it mimics the human's brain. So it is a class of algorithms that uses many layers to learn a task, whether supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, or uh, any other uh, other scheme. Each layer can be thought as of as a uh, transformation from input to intermediate outputs. 
the numerous layers uh, allow uh, for the algorithms to encode data in very simple very complex ways some of these algorithms uh, can be thought of as a progressively transforming input data into something more composite or um, and uh, uncomplex so a simple example which we can discuss now deep learning algorithms that analyze an image may have the lower layers identify edges while the while the higher layers might may identify the features relevant to human uh, such as like text or faces it, it based on uh, it mainly re uh, relies something uh, called as like um, neural networks so if you see here so this would be input uh, we we um, so in general ml uh, we have an input we extract from future we classify and the output will be car so this uh, the car image will be the input we do the feature extraction the classification will be done and then we output it as a car or a, it or it is a not car it is not a car and deep learning will be like it gives an input it uh, it uh, based on neural networks it classifies it extracts feature and then it gives output as car or not not a car that's sim uh, simply about uh, the deep learning so now we have a couple of uh, processes like why why do we need a or ml um, in rpa so we uh, for uh, just uh, we'll discuss about an example quickly we have a couple of processes rpa process itself where we need to for example uh, if we have to read an email and that email would be written in a free form text and uh, that's right so and they would say they, that uh, the inter we have to interpret the email and give some output so th for those cases the robot itself can't handle on its own so there we need a or ml model for example here we use a natural language processing so based on the um, uh, based on the text that is being uh, sent by user so some um, some NLP model will be used. Uh, we already have uh, out-of-box models in AI Center itself. So there we use, we make a use of some model, and then so there will be um, a sentiment analysis uh, basically. So that will give the. So we have, for example, if we have a uh, separate folders, we 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 get an email. Uh, we have to classify that. So based on the text, based on the sentiment analysis from NLP, we classify that into either it it is dependent to it is. Uh, it has to go to loan part or it has to go to some other part so uh, based on the text the uh, the classification should happen so in that cases we definitely need ARML so for that we actually use uh, there are many other examples as well so that would be one of the best example so what's next so in the coming sessions we'll be discussing about um, uh, how do we enable AI center for our uh, orchestrator and so uh, how do we create why how do we make our account uh, uh, how do we ask for enterprise edition so now we need for a center we need to enable enterprise edition so uh, in for trial period we'll get um, so for me it, it is still 54 days so how do we enable that and then how do we create a process uh, for a center how do we create a project and what are these uh, dashboards data sets data labeling ml packages pipelines ml skills and how do we make use these ml skills in ua path so all those discussions we can will do that in the coming sessions up to that have a nice day thank you and happy automation